Oh, here we go. A Serbian film. So this was requested by a patron of mine, Royce Bunn. I am assuming is how we pronounce this. So, I could not... Let me level with you, Royce. I could not find my copy of a Serbian film. Now, I got a bootleg of this many, many years ago when I could not find a copy of this for any reason anywhere. And I had a disc just laying around and it has pretty much disappeared off the face of the earth. So I did want to rewatch this. Now, I have seen this movie three or four times. So my memory of it's pretty good. But to be fair, I haven't seen the movie in eight years, seven or eight years. This has been a long time. But this is the kind of movie that when you see it, it's not going to quickly leave your mind. <laughs> now, that being said, okay, obviously the thing to talk about here is the controversy surrounding the movie. There are people that will just outright never see this film for any reason. There are people who detest this film with every fiber of their body. There's people who detest people who watch this movie and support it and could even say a positive thing about it or even sat through it or knew what they were getting themselves into and watched it anyways. This film sparks a lot of outrage and anger in people. But isn't that the point of it? I will say this. When I went into the movie, I have watched... There was, I think we all go through this as horror fans. Maybe not all of us, but there's a lot of us that go through this phase as horror fans. We become gore hounds, right? And so we start to want to push ourselves. We want to start to see, like, what's the really hard shit? Like, people always say, oh, you haven't seen nothing yet, man. There's way harder shit out there. You think this Friday the 13th stuff is hard? You go and you watch this foreign shit or whatever. You're going to see hard. And so, yeah, we start exploring, like, what are the craziest, the most shocking films ever made? And you find your Cannibal Holocaust and your August Underground and your Guinea Pig movies and your Burning Moons and your Salo 120 Days of Sodom. And, and I watched all of them. I went and I just had a freaking fest. And I, and I sat through every motherfucking one of these movies. And the, and the majority of them, like the August Undergrounds or the Burning Moon or any of these movies, they're fucking terrible. Like, outright terrible. Like, yes, they're shocking and they're fucking, de you know, decapitated bodies and the horror scene of, like, the hell depiction at the end of the Burning Moon is nuts. I'm not going to say it's not, but they're such poorly made movies. Of course, these shits ain't gonna get a budget. What fucking producer in his right mind is gonna throw any money at this? How many people are gonna come and work on this that are good with special effects and whatnot? People are gonna look at the script. People are gonna, you know, they're gonna be asked to be like, hey, can you make me a baby to fuck? And people are gonna be like, excuse me? Absolutely not. It will have nothing to do with it. Get, imagine how many people they can get act in a movie like this. You know, you'll tank your career if you act in a movie like this. You know, or the vomit gore girls or whatever like who the fuck is going to star in a movie like that there's some people of course obviously they get made but for the most part getting a movie made like this is always what's fascinating to me like it's hard enough to go and pitch a movie to people but imagine going around and trying to pitch a serbian film to people in america now this isn't an american film obviously and i actually the title is kind of funny to me because They'll say, oh, what's what's the craziest movie you've ever seen? What What's what's this and that? And you'll be like, well, you know, and you'll name some titles and you'll be like, and a Serbian film, you know. Or you'll be like, oh, I saw this really fucking crazy movie. It's a Serbian film. And they'll be like, okay, what's it called? And be like, well, it's a Serbian film. Yeah, I know. It's from Serbia. What is it called? <laughs> it's a fucking Serbian film. That's the name. Who's on first? Um, so there is that kind of funny aspect of it. But imagine trying to pitch a Serbian film. Imagine trying to pitch August Underground to somebody and be like, you want to star in this? You want to come and make this movie with us? You want to have your face and your name attached? Are you going to take this to your family? Hey, look, I starred in a Serbian film. Let's watch it together. Let's get the family together. You know, you want to see what I've done with my career? Here you go. Um, a lot of these are foreign movies because 
you know, this is, this country is a little, little wee sensitive, or should I say my country? Obviously, I have plenty of subscribers that are outside the United States. I always think everyone's from the United States. Typical American, the center of the universe. Um, but yeah, that's, that's a, a completely fascinating uh, thing about a film like this. Another extremely fascinating thing about this movie for me is how well made it is. It is really well shot. It is really well acted. When I watched it, I was like, wow, this is actually a good movie. I can't believe it. I never thought I'd say that. And this is thought of as, in a lot of circles, as the most extreme film ever made. Now, do I believe that myself? Uh, no. Now, what would be... I don't really know. I can tell you this film didn't affect me the most. I've said this before on the channel. Megan is Missing affected me the most of any movie, of any horror movie or any movie I've ever watched. For some reason, when I watched that, I had like a full-blown panic attack. I was freaking out. When they show the pictures of the girl with the ball gag and everything, I, for some reason, my brain, I lost it. Because I just was like, oh my God, this shit happens. It could happen to my kids. and I fucking lost my mind. I like had to run outside. I was having a full-blown panic attack. <laughs> This movie did not affect me like that. Not to say that there isn't some extremely shocking sequences in it. But, uh, you know, I think a lot of people also go into this movie beforehand with intimate knowledge of what to expect. I feel like there's a lot of people... There, there's very few people who go into this movie with no knowledge of it at all. Could you imagine? Could you imagine how... Like, if you were a person... And you sat down to watch this knowing nothing, just blind watch. Like, all right, let's pop this on. Especially like some normal person who isn't into hardcore stuff at all. Maybe they were just like, oh, what's, what's this about? And they popped it on. They would never get to some of the harder shit. But let's say they did. Let's say they're like, oh my God, what am I watching? I remember this happened with my dad. With the Human Centipede Part 2. And... <laughs> My dad actually called me up after he watched it and he was like, I'm so fucking mad at you right now and this and that. And I was like, for what? And he's like, I watched one of your movies. And I was like, what are you talking about? And he's like, a Human Centipede 2. And I was like, oh my God, you watched that? That is one of the craziest movies I've ever watched in my life. That movie's absolutely insane. I don't think the first one's crazy at all. I think the second one's absolutely fucking crazy. The violence and everything. And I can't believe that was on Netflix. That was on Netflix. Imagine a Serbian film on Netflix. I think it's just as hardcore as a Serbian film, to be honest. I mean, yes, no one's fucking a baby in it, but a baby does get its head like caught under a gas pedal and she smushes the baby's head. It's a pretty hardcore fucking movie. And for that to be on Netflix is hilarious to me. Streaming. Just sitting there streaming. Anyway. But yeah, my dad calls me and he's like, Hey, you know, son, <laughs> I'm mad at you, this and that. And I was like, I don't own all horror movies. You can't blame me anytime you watch a horror movie you don't like. He's like, it's the sickest fucking thing I ever watched in my life. And I was like, you watched? Why'd you didn't, why didn't you turn it off? And he's like, I couldn't. I couldn't look away. I just kept watching it. It was like a train wreck kind of thing. And I was like, I never recommended this movie. I've never even mentioned this movie to you. If you would have called me and been like, hey, Jason, do you, want, do you think I'd like Human Centipede 2? I'd say, fuck no, don't watch that. You'll hate it. So I find that to be hilarious that he did that. But I can't imagine my dad pressing play. My dad, you want to think he would get angry about humans and it'd be too? Holy shit, man. When a dude starts fucking a newborn baby in this movie, he, he would have... <laughs> he would have called me, probably, and been like, "You're, fu I'm disowning you. That's it. You're, you're done. I'm giving you up for adoption, even though you're in your 30s. I've had it. And that would have been that. I would have never talked to my father again. And I've been like, what? I didn't even... I didn't bring the movie over and say, hey, Dad, here's a here's a wonderful treat for you. Make sure that you check it out and let me know what you think after. Give me all the credit if you love it or if you hate it. Um, another really funny story attached to this movie is that I've told this story on the channel before, but I have to tell it here because it's the only time I'm ever talking about this movie in full. Um, I went to meet these guys to be a roommate of theirs, and it was the first time I'd ever met them. And we were just chatting, and I said I was into horror movies, and they're like, oh, we heard about this movie, because a uh, Serbian film had just come out around that time, and it was like all the rage, it was all the buzz around town. 
And they were like, have you ever heard of it? And I just so happened to have a copy in my car in the moment because I carried it around in the glove box because it was just in an envelope. It didn't have a case. And I didn't like, I, I, I got it in the mail. I watched it. And then I put it back in my car because I had a second copy. They sent me two accidentally. And I put one in my car. And uh, they were like this and that. And I was like, I have it on my car, which is not the thing you want to tell people. Like, I'm driving around with the sickest movie ever made you know, as, as people say, um, it's out in my car and they're like, really, we want to see it. So like I brought it in and I watched this movie with dudes that were evaluating me on whether or not they wanted to live with me having not known me. And we're sitting here and watching dudes, you know, a dude fuck his kid to death and uh, a chick getting her, uh, you know, teeth pulled out and then a dick shoved down her throat till she suffocates and a dude banging a chick from behind doggy style and then cutting her fucking head off like a hardcore donkey punch and all these insane sequences and one of my one of the guys actually had to walk out of the room and was just like this is fucked up this I can't do <laughs> he left and they still moved in with me they must be psychotic but they were like yeah man we had a good time whatever you should definitely move in I, was, I thought for sure when the movie was on I was like what was I thinking this was such a bad idea but uh, they took me in as their roommates for, a, for you know, I don't, I, we lived together for maybe like six months until I fucked one of them to death and then they learned from their mistakes. So, or well, one of them did anyway. Uh, but anyway, so there you go. So the movie itself, um, I've, sp I've spoken a lot about this, but already, I mean, I, I don't have a lot to say about the movie. As I said, it's a very well-made film. Um, I actually think it's a good movie. Every time I've watched it, I like it. You know, you got the aging porn star Milos or Milos, and he goes and he's uh, um, brought into this art film, and uh, they offer him a ton of money, and he's not given a script. You guys know the movie if you haven't seen it. If you haven't, I mean, I'm sure there's people watching this who have not seen the movie. I'm sure actually probably half of you or more are watching this have never seen the movie. So they bring him in, and they're like, this is an art film. They won't give him a script this and that and as he starts making it he realizes that they're making some kind of a snuff film but he thinks it's more for uh, like it's more of like a joke it's more of a thing at first and then as it goes on he realizes this is more depraved and more depraved kind of reminds me a little bit um of a much harder version of like eight millimeter or something you know as Nicolas Cage is running around looking for a snuff film as uh, these guys are making uh, like their own snuff film around him. But obviously much, much, much crazier. Um, the biggest sequence in the film that's talked about, of course, is the newborn porn, the newborn porn, or as my friends used to call it, me and my friends used to call it the NBP. Um, we, we used to make that joke all the time. We like, dude, that dude's watching some straight up NBP. Um, and we always just, just laugh, and the guys would be like, MVP, what the fuck is that? And we'd be like, mm, like, you don't know. <sighs> now, this sequence for me, while in concept is crazy, in execution, it's not as crazy as it seems. Yes, there's insanely ex uh, sensitive ass people out there, of course. So when they watch this, this is going to be way crazy over the top, and they're going to be talking, like looking at me like right now, like I'm insane. But for someone who doesn't get offended, so for someone who doesn't get shocked, I'm waiting for this sequence, like, oh my god, here we go. And we have this extremely fake looking baby. <laughs> like, and of course, they're not going to use a real baby. They shouldn't have, it would have been fucked up had they used a real baby. Because if they used a real baby, that baby would then grow up and be like, hey, I was in a movie. And be like, oh, what movie? Oh, I was in a movie where I was being fucked right out of the womb. Okay, yeah, probably not the best. But they have this fake baby and he, takes, and he, and he sticks his dick into it off screen. And I'm thinking, with as shocking as I've heard this scene is, I'm thinking we're seeing dick entering baby. Now, do I need to see that? Absolutely not. But because it's almost all off screen and you just kind of see the baby's face reaction that's hard core don't get me wrong but i think you just build things up so much in your head now had i went into this movie completely blind and that happened i'd have been like what the fuck is happening <laughs> what is he gonna fuck that baby 
And he does, and it's like, holy shit, I would have been telling everybody. But because I had prior knowledge going in, like, oh, somebody fucks a baby in the movie. You're like, all right, here we go, here we go, it's going to be crazy. And it's like, oh yeah, I mean, that was crazy, but I mean, it could have been fucking crazier. But that's just me, and that's my kind of, you know, mindset. And that I'm always that guy, it's like, oh, it could have been harder. You know, it could have been crazier. But going back to my uh, run with the shock films, the guinea pigs and all that stuff, they not only were shitty films, like made films, but they were just boring because there's nothing driving the narrative. There's nothing interesting happening. The characters are all so fucking lame. And you're just like, oh my God, everyone's so horrible. I just want them to shut up. I don't want to watch any more of this movie. So I just, I'm not sitting there shocked. I'm sitting there bored. And so I just got done with those movies. I, I, I don't have any interest in them now. When people are like, oh, there's another guinea pig film or if they were to make another august underground or something i'd be like oh i don't give a fuck i'm not watching it i'm not wasting my time that's just pure waste of time to me now a serbian film on the other hand is a well-made movie it has a decent storyline it's well acted the way the story progresses keeps me interested throughout the entire film to the point where i want to see what happens next i want to see what happens with milos i want to see these decisions how this drives him what's driving him uh, the message behind the film. I know the director said that, like, over in Serbia, people are fucked since they're babies. Like, they kind of come out of the womb um, at a disadvantage. And this is kind of an artistic look on that or something. And, of course, there's other people who are going to look at that and be like, fuck him, he's just he's just a pedophile or he's just a pervert who wanted to make this kind of movie and he's trying to justify it as art or whatever. And I get the stance. I do. I do. Um, but I'm just not on that. I'm just not on that team. Like... You know, this is the kind of movie that if you don't want to watch it, don't watch it. No babies were harmed or fucked in the process of this film. Um, I sure as hell would rather a guy make a film like this than actually go out and do something like it. But regardless, I mean, I don't know, maybe this gives people ideas. But that would be true of anything. I mean, in Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Halloween, any of these movies could inspire people to do shit. So I don't know, you know, in that stance of things. But it, it, if you take your if you take yourself away from how shocked you are and you actually watch the film for a film, it's a well made movie. It's good. It's a good movie. I mean, it doesn't. It has like a pretty high rating on IMDb. I think it's like in the sixes, right? And that's for good reason. It's an intriguing film. It's shocking, but it's engaging. It's it's interesting. It keeps you going. Um, <laughs> when he's at the end of the movie and he's and he's like what the hell is that I'm like some of my kid's hair I think yeah some of my kid's hair in my head um when when he's looking down and he fucking realizes he's fucking his kid up the ass holy shit it's a male kid and he's like bleeding and everything that is just brutal <laughs> That is so brutal, man. Um, And then that scene where he's, like, rejecting because he has to, like, fuck that little girl. Like, there's a little girl on the set, and she's, like, in it. And he's, like, no, 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 I won't do it. That shit. It's, yeah, it really takes your mind into horrible, horrible places. (laughs) really does. So, if you, yeah, if you're going to have, like, if you're going to sit down and you're going to watch a shock film. And you really want to be, um kind of floored by subject matter and uh and what's ha- what's taking place this one definitely for me has the heaviest hitting um subject matter like i mean you don't get much hard you don't get much worse than than the things that are portrayed in the film fucking an infant out of the womb fucking your son your very very young son to death fucking all the things I said before <laughs> you just never gonna see any of this stuff in a movie um, and a lot of people wouldn't want to see this in a movie and I, they're probably upset with for me for even talking about it or smiling and making jokes while I talk about it. this movie definitely incites the kind of anger and kind of offense and, and, and rejection it, it, it wanted to that's the point of a movie like this it's to offend it's to shock it's to uh, get discussion going it's to for whatever reason it is um, I think this movie is extremely successful for it. And, uh, you know, it it deserves its place 
in the shock category uh, in the history of film in general. So, yeah, I mean, as I said, I, I, I haven't seen the movie in a long time, so I can't comment on all the aspects of it, but that was still 20 minutes. I hope Royce got enough out of this uh, just discussion of the film in general um, and my thoughts upon the the shock value anyway, because that's really what you want to know, right? Is, is the shocking sequences within the film, that's really what we're here to talk about. Um, or you just wanted me to talk about Milo's, Milo's uh, like Dirk Diggler, John Holmes style cock that's like this big around and this long and he can choke a chick to death with it. <laughs> um, yeah, that thing. Jesus Christ, man. That, that makes me go, wow, I, I have a vagina in comparison. Jesus Christ, that thing's, thing's massive. Um, but yeah, overall... I give it a thumbs up as a film. I enjoy it. Uh, not for the faint of heart. You know what kind of person you are if you can watch this. If you can watch this, you already have. So um, there you go, Royce. And that was fun. I've always wanted to discuss that one. And I put it off for weeks trying to find my copy, hoping that I was going to be able to kind of break it down. But I really don't feel like my review would have been all that different, to be completely honest. I think it would have been pretty much the same. So there you go. Thanks for the patron donation. And if you guys want to join the Patreon and request some other insane film, please don't request another fucking crazy, like The August Undergrounds, all the things I just mentioned. I don't want to watch that shit again. I really have no interest in it. It just bores me. I'll just kind of say the same shit, except for all all of it will be negative. It'll be like, this looked like shit. This was stupid. This character's lame. Fuck this movie. Fuck the look of this movie. Fuck everything about this movie. So, anyway, guys. All right. Adios.